Why is this albatross chick vomiting plastic? Right before leaving the nest, and preparing to take off for their long journey over the ocean, the albatross chicks cough out a bolus. A mass of the indigestible material they have been fed by their parents. They normally contain hard parts from squids, seeds, wood, feathers and rocks, but nowadays, a dramatic amount of this material is plastic. In several scientific studies, Biologists found that 100% of boluses thrown up by albatross chicks in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands contained plastic products, and 52 to 66% of the bolus weight was plastic. But how can all of this trash end up in albatross chicks? How does plastic affect albatrosses? Additionally, we will also talk about how climate change is forcing albatross couples to divorce and not stay together their whole long life of 50 years, like they normally do. When talking about these birds, it is impossible not to mention the legends that have been told about them in years. Albatrosses are considered to be amongst the most legendary of all birds. Sailors in centuries have described these birds to be big, majestic, and most importantly, they could fly effortlessly behind the ships for weeks, without hardly flapping a wing. Killing an albatross was a bad omen as they were assumed to be the souls of drowned sailors or the bringers of wind. Legends aside, we will begin the life cycle of albatrosses with their mating ritual. When they are ready, at around six years of age, they come back from their long journey over the ocean, to the land where they were born, in hopes of finding a soulmate. These young birds usually remain flying over the colony for longer than the rest, as understandably it is intimidating to find a spot to land amongst the old couples. So very often these land zones are on the edges of the island. Albatrosses mate for life, so they will go through a very complicated ritual to find the best partner. To make sure they are choosing the right one, they go on a series of dates, but instead of bars or restaurants, these dates include a lot of wild singing and dancing. But there is a problem, the birds we are following in the story are teenagers, and don't know how to properly perform the ritual. They instinctively sing and dance but they need more practice, so small groups of young members gather and they all perform the ritual at the same time. Then the group breaks and they get back to flying around the colony. They land again, form other groups and keep practicing until groups become pairs. The pairs keep dancing together, and the complex gestures they make become more and more synchronized, until the birds are basically mirror images of each other. This courtship can last up to two years. After all, it is critically important to spend time together. The ones that are able to achieve this magical level of synchronization, become bonded as mates for a lifetime, which can be more than 60 years depending on the species. But not all relationships survive for long. It is common for the couples to break up, such as in instances when they fail to reproduce, and it is also known for them to participate in extra pair copulation, or also known as cheating in the human perspective, but very few do so. It is safe to say that albatrosses are extremely loyal to their partners. A recent study shows that only 1% of couples break up, but sadly this rate is getting higher and higher, up to 8% in some years, and biologists say that the reason behind this is global warming. Albatrosses usually raise one chick every other year. They take turns incubating the egg, while the other takes off to feed itself. The journey over the ocean will take them thousands of miles from home, and they may not be back for a week or more. They depend highly on each other in the joint mission to raise new life. The one left in charge of the egg, will not move away, not even for a moment until the partner returns. They will get cold, hungry, dehydrated, but they will never leave the egg. Unfortunately, there are times when the sitting bird has to make a tough decision. In cases when the partner takes too long to come back, the sitting albatross is faced with the difficult choice of having to abandon the egg, as if it keeps staying, both the new chick and the parent will die of starvation. Sadly, these instances are becoming more frequent. Due to climate change, oceans are becoming warmer. Warmer waters impact fish in many ways. They get more diseases, less food and less oxygen in the water. To escape this, the fish tend to swim deeper and change their location towards the poles where the waters are colder on the surface of the ocean. This behavior of the fish has a direct impact on the albatross. 
Unlike penguins who can dive to great depths in search of food, albatrosses are relatively bad at it, so they are highly dependent on squids, flying fish or other sea creatures that spend time on the surface of the water. In these conditions, albatrosses are forced to fly further away from their nests to feed themselves. With a feeding journey that lasts longer than usual, more stress and pressure is added to the partner left in the nest, increasing the chances for it to abandon the egg in favor of surviving or get involved with a new partner. Just 1% of albatrosses naturally separate after choosing their life partner, but new findings have shown that couples are divorcing more often despite a successful breeding season. In the years when the temperatures were higher, the divorce rate jumped up to 8%. If they manage to survive through the troubling times of climate change, and their chick is hatching, it's time to feed it, so back at the ocean they go, one at a time in search of food. However, finding food is not the only thing. It needs to be healthy, nutritious, and not plastic. After all, albatrosses have evolved to trust what the ocean has to offer, so when they see a floating piece of plastic, they swallow it. They can't know any better. Even less so the young chick, which accepts whatever food their parent regurgitates in its mouth. These plastics can be toxic, sharp and pose great threats to adults. But having a stronger stomach, they can be lucky enough to regurgitate all of it outside. Meanwhile, the total opposite stands for the young chicks. Their delicate stomachs get injured by sharp and toxic plastic, and in many cases causing death. If the chick is lucky enough to survive the feeding time, at 4 to 8 months of age depending on the species, they are left alone. The young chicks wait for their chance to catch some wind and start their long journey. Right before flying, they regurgitate all the indigestible food they were fed by their parents. Albatrosses are big birds, they can't fly without the help of blowing wind, so it matters to remove any useless weight from their stomachs. Luckily, the majority of them succeed in doing so, but nonetheless, more than half of that indigestible food is plastic. On the other hand, the rest of the chicks fail to clean their system as the pieces are too large to cough out. They either die because they are not strong enough to start flying, or fly with a stomach full of waste, lowering their chances of survival. The young albatrosses who manage to survive all the hard challenges thrown at them, begin their solitary life. These large birds can travel at least 10,000 miles over the sea before returning to land. How they manage to do that is a wonder in itself. They take advantage of the wind in such a way, that they barely have to flap their wings. One study showed that they barely use any more energy when flying, compared to when being on land. When they are too tired, they can also rest in the water. The young ones come back to the land they were born, only when they are ready to find their soulmates, at around 6 years of age. Adults return every breeding season, finishing their solitary journey, and ready to reunite with their loved one. What do you think? Is the albatross your new favorite bird? Leave your comment below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.